Hi everybody, I'm Kevin Horn and I want to thank you for joining me on today's edition of Equipping the Saints. And our focus on this broadcast is to share real revelation, empowering revelation from God's Word to help the body of Christ effectively deal with those things that are challenging our faith. And I mean, I mean, there are things in the world that are trying to exalt themselves above the knowledge of God, above what God says you are and uh, what you can do or what you can have. And so if you are tired, or if you're getting sick and tired of the, of the status quo, of maybe being overwhelmed or, or, or um, controlled by forces that Jesus uh, defeated on the cross, then just uh, stay tuned because I have some empowering revelation uh, that I believe will strengthen you and bless you. And I have it on my heart today to, um, to talk about Philippians 4.13, which says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And let me just speak that over your life right now. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And... Um, and the uh, Lord put it on my heart to, um, to share a little testimony of a healing, a little clip. Uh, just a week ago, a guy came in and he gave a testimony to the healing power of the Lord. And I thought I would use it today as a, a point of teaching uh, to encourage people uh, to, to speak boldly what God has given us to speak. And, uh, and so I share this clip today again not to draw attention to us or myself, this ministry, but to bring glory to the Lord and to encourage people because this is for everybody. I mean, we're all called into uh, the healing power of the Word of God. And so let's just take a quick look at this, this clip and then we'll come back and, uh, and share some real revelation on how you can begin to experience the strength of the Lord that will empower you to do all things through Christ. Praise God. Hi everybody, this is uh, Kevin Horn. And I'm here in Modesto with my brother, uh, Mike. And uh, so go ahead and tell him what happened, brother. You came in about a week ago. A week ago, Wednesday night, this last Wednesday night, I came in and for about three years, due to Agent Orange from Vietnam, I had on my right leg uh, about six inches and it had gotten worse, it had spread to the side of my knee and to the other leg. I was prayed for by Brother Kevin and God definitely touched both areas, both legs. There's three areas that was just starting, they're gone completely. The main area on my right leg, it's drying up at the time that he prayed for me. It was festering up, pus was coming out of it, it was nasty. And now there's no sores on my leg, the whole thing is drying up. And I just praise God that just one more healing came to me. Yeah, so yeah, there was nothing you could do about that, right? The doctor said? No, the doctor said it was incurable because of Agent Orange. Yeah. It's similar to psoriasis, but it's not psoriasis. They did a, took a sample of it, and it was definitely caused from Agent Orange. Yeah, and all the pain's gone now? No it? pain. Wow. The, both areas are dried up. Where it had spread to my left leg was the area about two and a half inches wide. It's completely dried up and, and part of it's already peeled off. It's healed completely. Wow, that's a, that's a real crazy point. Well, we thank you, brother, for sharing that. Bringing glory to the kingdom. Amen, brother. In the name of Jesus. Thank Praise you. God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, I, I, I pray that that testimony inspired you. I'm telling you the truth. There's enough power in that testimony to heal you. And um, why? Because the Word of God says we overcome the world, the evil one, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. The testimony of Jesus is uh, the spirit of prophecy. And so I share testimonies quite a bit because there's power, there's faith. The, the, the same faith that caused that person to, 
to be transformed can, can transform you if you'll, if you'll catch a, a, the revelation of it by the Spirit. And so let's just uh, talk a little bit uh, about, you know, doing things through Christ, doing all things through Christ who strengthens us. And that's in Philippians chapter 4, 13. And this comes through a lifestyle of love, of, of faith, of obedience. Uh, we are saved, uh, we are in covenant, and uh, our salvation, our covenant is through grace. We are saved by grace through faith. And faith works by love. That's in, a, uh, um, in Scripture there. And let me just kind of build on that. Love. And what is love? A lot of people, they hear the word. It's different from the love in the world. But, um, but this is the love of God that you keep His commandments. That's in 1 John chapter 5. And... Uh, and you know what, can we keep the Lord's commandments, you know, his, uh, his commandments are not grievous, His words, His yoke is not grievous. You know, in the world you're going to be, you're going to be overwhelmed with the burdens of the world, but when you're walking in love, there's going to be power to empower you to live, not like the world uh, in slavery or, or, or heavy laden, but you're going to be empowered um, by, by love. And, and it's already done. And Jesus has already paid the price on the cross. And, and so I've come to realize that the, the ability to, um, to do all things through Christ who strengthens me is connected to, to the, having the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ um, literally is God's thoughts. It's, it's, it's faith. Faith is a revelation of God's thoughts towards us that gives us an expected end. And I'm just going to share some, some nuggets here to, uh, to encourage, to stir people. And um, I'm telling you the truth. You do not have to, to uh, be satisfied with, with a religion that doesn't operate in the real truth. I mean, the presence of the Lord is here to breathe on the Word of God, and it can illuminate you in the spirit of your mind and transform you. You do not have to live... Uh, as a world, as conformed to the world, but you can be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And the mind of Christ is connected to His finished works, is connected to the promises. God's given us all things for life and godliness, and it comes through His promises, through faith. And again, faith is a relationship. And, um, and, uh, and so... <laughs> This is what I had to learn, and I had to learn that, um, that to operate in the realm of faith, I had to change the way that I thought. And I had to start um, acting like Abraham did and, um, and realize that uh, it's God who quickens the dead and calls those things that be not as though they are. And so the same word, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead the same word that created this world, this universe, you know what? God has, has given us access uh, into the power of God. And the, the gospel of Christ is the power of God uh, to everyone who believes. And it says, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. And, uh, and again, faith is a victory that overcomes. And when you start to, to tap into this realm uh, of God's love uh, through relationship, you start to see the mind of Christ. And, um, and so Philippians 4.13 again says, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And realize, if you flip back a few chapters, uh, realize that that ability is connected to the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ, Jesus, uh, you know what? It says in Philippians 2.5, says, let this mind, which was in Christ Jesus, be in you. And Jesus himself, being a form of God, thought him and not robbery to be equal with God. And I'm suggesting to you, God's not calling you to be God, but he wants you to be equal with him in believing his word, his, his covenant in fullness. He wants you to be uh, equal with him in believing all things are possible, that you have all power over all the power of the enemy that uh, you can overcome the enemy, you can overcome those forces that are trying to rob you or destroy your life. I mean, he's given you everything. 
and uh, but it, it's connected to the mind of Christ. It's connected to the power of God, and uh, and and this this comes through a relationship through love, and uh, and it starts with humility. It starts with looking not after your own needs, but looking after the needs of others. And when you start stepping in your covenant, and uh, you know what, the mind of Christ is going to be drawn. Um, uh, the anointing is going to breathe on you, and you're going to start to see and do things that you could never do in and of yourself. And so for me, I think the hardest shift was for me was to change the way I think, uh, I thought. And, uh, and that when I started stepping into that realm, I started to see the mind of Christ. And again, it happened through love. Let me just kind of build on this. And uh, what hinders people more than they may realize is the enemy is trying to make you double-minded. If he can get you double-minded, if he can get you to look at the circumstance and allow that thing to, uh, whatever it is, a report, you know, or, or of some kind of a spiritual bondage to exalt itself against the knowledge of God in the realm of your mind, he can make you double-minded. He can hinder you from receiving from God. That's in the book of James. But Jesus said, you know, um, that the light of the body is the eye. And if your eye be single, your whole body would be full of light. And you know what? When you start walking in love, when you love God, it's the commandment of the Lord to love Him with all our, our heart, our soul, our strength, our mind. Guess what happens? You get filled with light and where the Spirit of, of God is, where there is liberty. You start to see uh, things through the realm of love. And it gives you the ability to hope all things. Like Abraham, it says, he hoped against hope and became the father of nations. And it says, so shall his seed be. And we need to realize we are no longer as we were. We are dead, the old man that is, and our life is now hid with Christ in God. And uh, when Christ, who is our life, appears, guess what? We appear with him in glory. And that is just a miraculous uh, thing. And so, literally, the way to overcome the enemy, fear, and these things that are challenging, exalting themselves against the knowledge of God is through the mind of Christ. And, and, and so it says in Scripture, God has not given you the spirit of fear, but a spirit of power. That's dunamis. Um, that's miracle working power. That's, that tie is, is connected to Pentecost, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We're, we're entering into that, that season right now where people are, are celebrating uh, Pentecost. And, you know, that's the old Jewish uh, holiday. But guess what? We are living in the fulfillment of that. And uh, you've been given the spirit of power the spirit of love and a sound mind. It says in Scripture, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. That's in Joel chapter 2. It's connected. Your deliverance is connected to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It's connected to you calling on the Lord. And how do you call on the Lord? Through His Word. It says, in, it says this in Scripture as well in, in the book of uh, Romans chapter 10. It says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be delivered, shall be healed, shall be blessed, set free. Oh, man, and this is awesome. And so there's a, there's a real revelation here that, um, that God wants all of us to tap into. It's for all of us. And uh, what I did um, with this, this gentleman is all I did is I, I spoke the word of God. And uh, when you speak the Word of God, you pray the prayer of faith. I just anointed him with, with oil, and I, I sought the Lord for what did he wanted me to do. He gave me the words to speak from the Word of God. I prayed the prayer of faith, and he was healed. It was just that simple. I've come to the revelation that it's not my ability, it's, it's not my Word, but it's the Word of God. It's the faith of the Son of God. Like Paul said, it's no longer I who live, but, but the life we, we now live, we live by the faith of the Son of God who died for us and gave His life for us. And we can all tap into this. And when you realize that faith uh, starts with a seed, 
and that that seed already has the spirit and the life contained within it. Jesus said the words that he spoke, they are spirit and they are life. And, um, and when, you ha when you get into the revelation that you, you are dead, the old mind can't even receive these things, but you have to be quickened. Remember, God quickens the dead. He calls those things that be not as though they were. And, and our Lord, you know, it says, it says the first man, Adam, 1 Corinthians 15, 45, I believe, was made a living soul, but he fell, he died. But the last man, Adam, Jesus, he was made a quickening spirit. And so this word, these promises all have the life within the seed, the ability to bring it into, into manifestation and fulfillment. And, and that happens through obedience. The power to live as a son of God, it, it comes through your obedience. On the other side of your obedience is a manifestation of Jesus. And, uh, and that's empowering. And so, well, Jesus said it this way, John 14, 21, He who has my commandments, he it is that loves me, he that loves me shall be loved of my Father, and I will manifest. Why am I talking about love and power so much? Well, you know, the, king, the, the, the kingdom of God is not in just word, but it's in power. People need to see the demonstration of the, of the living word so their faith won't be rooted in the wisdom of men, which can't save them, heal them, set them free. But our faith can be rooted and grounded in love and, uh, and, and there's power, that's where it flows. Paul said it this way, he prayed, he prayed to the Ephesians, he says, you know, he prayed and that, that they would be we strengthened in their inner man. In other words, when we get born again, we have a recreated spirit that it has a capacity to house the Word of God, the miracles of God, the, the blessings of God, uh, the favor of the Lord, everything for life and godliness. So be, he prayed that they would be strengthened in their inner man by the spirit of might. And that word is dunamis, again, miracle working power so that Christ might dwell or tabernacle in their hearts by faith, so that they being rooted and grounded in love uh, would begin to, to know the width, the depth, the breadth, and the height. And that's what we need to know. Uh, because when you know the love of God, it goes on to say there in Ephesians 3, that it passes knowledge so that you might be filled with all fullness. When you're filled with all fullness, there's no room for worldly thoughts. The old mind is going to be driven out by the Word of God. And, uh, and you're going to be able to experience and, and, and know those things that are exceedingly above and beyond what you could imagine or think in and of yourself. And it's by the power of, of, of the Lord, the resurrection power, the same power that raised Him from the dead can cause you to walk in newness of life. And so Jesus said, if you had faith as a seed, as a grain of mustard seed, Luke 17, 6, realize mustard seed, I believe, is the only seed, I've heard this, is the only seed that will not mix or hybrid with another. If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, just a little seed, you could say to that sycamore tree or your circumstances, be plucked up by the root and cast into the sea and it would obey you. And that's all I did. I just re I learned that that love seeks to give. I learned uh, that I could speak the and pray the word of God. And, and my brother's um, circumstance with those sores on his legs, I anointed him with oil. I prayed the prayer of faith, and I released my faith, and I believed it. And you know what? The word did not return void. Just like it says in Isaiah fifty five eleven. And uh, you know what? When you learn that God really creates the fruit of your lips, that He will heal you, it, it changes everything. And so, so let me encourage you to take these promises of God. It says that we, we partake of the divine nature by the promises of God and, and put them into operation. Start speaking to your mountains according to um, Mark eleven twenty two. 23 there, Jesus says, have the faith of God. He says, if you will speak to your mountains and believe in your heart and not doubt, and I'm paraphrasing here, you shall have whatsoever you say. And, and, and why? Because it, it's connected to God. You cannot separate God from His Word. And, uh, and, <laughs> and so literally, 
we have the ability to release the reproduction power of God's Word into circumstances, into situations, into lives, and the, and the Word of God, you know, the anointing is there to break the yoke of the old and make a way for the new to come into manifestation. And it's just that simple. So I pray that this has encouraged you today. And I'm going to be building on this uh, in the days ahead. And I, I, uh, I pray that you keep watching our program. And, and we, uh, we have some real revelation. The Lord's blessed me with revelation in our, our fellowship. Uh, we've, we're embracing the fivefold ministry because that's God's prescription for uh, raising up the body of Christ. And uh, I believe that there was some real grace here today being released. And I pray that it impacts you. And, and so right now, I just kind of feel led to pray for somebody watching. You know, if you have a circumstance or you have a, an illness or maybe an emotional thing of fear, uh, you know what? Let me just encourage you. I want to pray for you right now just to, just to yield it to the Lord. And if you have any ought, if you have any unforgiveness towards anybody right now, first, forgive people because that can hinder your faith. Forgive them, bless them, and do that right now, right where you are, and let me pray for you. And uh, what I like to do when I pray, and we see a lot of people getting healed and get set free, is I, I, I release the anointing of God through the Word of God and because it breaks down the power of the enemy and it makes a word for the, the seed, the life of Jesus to manifest. So, so right now, we just thank you, Father. We come before you in your mighty name. And I lift up the, these people watching today. I pray for your anointing. I thank you for your anointing that comes according to your word, Isaiah 10, 27. I thank you. You create the fruit of my, my lips, Isaiah 57, 19. I speak into their lives right now, right here. And, uh, and I, I thank you for the anointing that breaks the, the yoke of the enemy in their circumstances, in their, in their lives, their minds, uh, their, their bodies. I thank you for your anointing that breaks the yoke and puts us in the, the place of liberty where we can receive the word of God. I thank you, Lord, for your word that, uh, that with the stripes of Jesus we are healed. I thank you, Lord, that as I pray that you are working right now, confirming your word with signs following. And I'm telling you, that prayer right there can heal you. It can bless you. It can change your circumstance. Lord, just bless those areas that need uh, favor. I thank you for the favor of your face shining on heaven, on people's finances in the name of Jesus. And uh, let me just say, maybe somebody's watching, you've gotten away from the Lord, or you're, or you're not born again. What are you waiting for? You can, you can receive the Lord right here, right now. Uh, it says in the Bible that when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart uh, the Word of God, the Lord Jesus, that He died on the cross, He rose from the dead, you shall be saved. Because it's with our heart we believe in the righteousness, and with our mouth salvation is made. And so it's made manifest. And whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So right now, if that's you, just say, yes, Lord, I want to receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart. Save me, Lord. I believe you died on the cross. You rose from the dead. And I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. And so I pray that this, this broadcast has blessed you today. And if you have just experienced a touch from the Lord, maybe a healing, or, or if you just received Jesus as your Lord, I would love to hear from you. And uh, I, would, I would encourage you, contact me, uh, email me, call me. And uh, if you like this, this message today and you would like a copy of it, you know what, uh, just stay tuned and I'll tell you how you can, you can get a copy of it. And I want to thank everybody for joining me today. And uh, I pray the Lord richly bless you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Again, if today's broadcast has blessed you, um, you know, and you'd like a copy of it, here's the information for you. And if you would like to partner with us, I uh, pray the Lord's blessings on you. And thank you again for joining us on Equipping the Saints. Hi, everyone. This is Kevin Horn, and I'm here with one of my sisters, and we're in Stockton. 
and uh, she's brave enough to come up here to give testimony of what the Lord has done in her life. And, and so you said you, you came up for prayer during ministry time, and, and what was going on in your body? started praying that I could feel the pain just leaving my body. Is it all gone now? It's all gone. It's all gone. I feel so much better now. Praise the Lord. Okay. That's pretty cool, huh? Yes. The Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And thank you uh, for praying for her too. And there's power in prayer. Amen. breaking the yoke and I just speak that to the roots I curse them I curse ungodly growth at the roots command you to dry up and I loose her body now infirmity you loose her oh man pain is gone it's all the pain's gone and with this stripe you are healed thank you Lord you just see that this bumps is grow down to the normal in the name of Jesus so what's happened? Pain is gone. Pain's gone. Okay. Pain's gone. So we give, we give the Lord the glory because it's, it's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. 